This is the Ironman Diet. Hi, I am retired professional triathlete, CEO of Diamond Bikes, TJ Tollickson, and today we are going to talk about the diet you can adopt to get to your ideal race weight. So before we jump into the diet side, let's talk about ideal race weight, okay? So there's a great book that Matt Fitzgerald wrote. Overall, we look at your BMI, your body mass index, and we have kind of an optimal body mass index for different sports. Uh, so in the sport of triathlon, the ideal body mass index for a female is 20, okay? Uh, for a male, we want that to be 21, okay? And if we were just running a marathon, we're not swimming and biking, we're just doing a marathon, that should be 18 for females and 19 for males. So how do you calculate your BMI? You tell me. So you take your weight in pounds, take that times 703. That is the numerator, the product of those two things. The denominator that you're gonna divide by is your height in inches squared. Okay, so for someone like me who right now is sitting at 165 pounds and I'm five foot 10, so that's 70 inches, 165 times 703 and I divide it by 70 times 70 and that puts my body mass index right around 23, okay? Uh, so that means I'm two over what I actually should be um, as an ideal triathlete. So I will tell you that my race weight dips that down from 23 to about 22.67. So I will race about 158 pounds all the way up to 162, 163 pounds. I'm not at my race weight right now. If you saw my point on Christian Blumenfeld, if you look at me right now, I'm actually a lot leaner than Christian Blumenfeld is who just won the Ironman World Championships. And so I will say, if you think he's fast now, if he was lean, he would be insanely fast. Uh, and I'll say this because every extra pound of body fat that you have equates to about two minutes in speed gain. So if I'm 10 pounds overweight, uh, or let's say me right now, if I'm seven pounds overweight right now, I lose those seven pounds, that's 14 minutes faster that I can race my Ironman. So you can imagine if you're over 10 pounds, that's 20 minutes faster that you can race. Um, so you can see race weight really matters. I'm not trying to put anybody in an eating disorder, make them anorexic. I will tell you that my problem is even when I'm really lean, my body mass index is higher than the average person. And it's because I'm more muscular than the average triathlete that I'm competing against. There you can see how your body mass index really matters. Um, I'll kind of go over these ideal weights just so you can see these numbers. If you are five foot eight male, then your weight would be 139 pounds. If you are a five foot 10 male, 147 pounds. If you're six foot tall, 155 pounds. And if you're six foot two, it'd be 164 pounds. I know what you're thinking. These are all really, really skinny people. And if you look at most pro triathletes, you'll also notice they are really, really skinny people. I'm not suggesting that every age group triathlete out there try to strive to hit that BMI or a 5% body fat to try to make themselves faster. But you should know that your weight is an important tool in training that can help achieve your race results that you're looking for. So once we know that, let's talk about the diet part of this. You know, eat your green vegetables. The last several years of my triathlon career, I was coached by Jesse Kropelnicki, and Jesse has a diet called the Core Diet. He wrote a book uh, about the Core Diet and training and fueling for triathlons specifically. It's a wonderful book. You can check out Jesse's book. You can see this link for the book, uh, or you can just search on Amazon for author Kropelnicki, and it will pop up. Uh, the Core Diet, what's it based off of? Well. It's based off maintaining a level blood sugar throughout the day when you're not training. 
okay? So keeping your blood sugar level means that you're taking in a certain amount of sugar with a certain amount of fiber and protein and fat so that you don't have massive blood sugar spikes. So something that would spike your blood sugar instantaneously would be something like apple juice. If I drank some apple juice right now, my blood sugar would all of a sudden spike and I would have all this energy and feel really great and then eventually it would crash down really hard and I would lose a lot of energy. I feel great, I ran 5K this morning. Really? No, I threw up in the shower. So the idea is not to have big spikes and big crashes, but to keep that blood sugar level throughout the day, uh, unless you're about to train, okay? And so uh, when you're about to train, we actually wanna spike our blood sugar, uh, and then we wanna try to keep the blood sugar high through the training period, and then keep it high through the recovery period, and then come back down to a lower level um, after training is over. So Jesse has what he calls a diet program for every day. So let's say you're not training for a day, you have a day off, what should you eat? Foods that are acceptable are lean meats, uh, low fat dairy, vegetables, uh, fruit, legumes, okay? So you can have some nuts, seeds, uh, all of these things are acceptable but he uses this thing called a core ratio. The core ratio is simply, you look at the back of a package, and I'm gonna use this Kirkland protein bar because this is something that I eat every day. Uh, so we're gonna look at this and we're gonna use the core ratio to calculate this. So we start with the carbohydrates and then we add the grams of sugar. So this has 22 grams of carbs and then we add in two grams of sugar. Okay, so that brings us to a total of 24 grams. And then we subtract the fiber. This has 10 grams of fiber, so that puts us at 12 grams. That number becomes our numerator. Our denominator, number on the bottom we're gonna divide by, is our fat plus our protein. So this has six grams of fat and 21 grams of protein. So that's gonna be 27 grams. So we're gonna have 12 divided by 27. The core ratio that we're shooting for is anything two or less, okay? So if you're two or less on your core ratio using the same calculation that I have, it's okay to eat and it maintains a solid, stable blood sugar throughout the day. That means most, most bread products are gonna be excluded unless you're using some paleo or Ezekiel sprouted bread. Um, they're probably gonna be excluded from this because regular bread is going to spike your sh uh, blood sugar too much. Sorry, I, uh, I ate a lot of sugar today. Let's go through what you might eat during a day where you don't have any training. So for me, that's pretty simple. I would get up in the morning, I would have a smoothie, I would put some whole fat, and I know this isn't part of this, but the whole picture is what I'm looking at. I would put some whole fat yogurt in there um, or some Greek yogurt in there, and that would give me the option of keeping the sugars low, the fat and the protein higher um, to stay in my core ratio. I would put that, some protein powder, frozen fruits, frozen vegetables in a smoothie, have the smoothie and breakfast, go for it. I would then probably snack on these protein bars. For lunch, uh, it's the same lunch I eat every day. I have tuna salad that I make with avocado oil mayonnaise, green chili peppers, two hard boiled eggs, uh, and a can of tuna, um, and then a can of green beans. So that's my lunch. All of that's core diet approved, keeps the blood sugar nice and steady. And then for dinner, I would do something like grill some salmon and steam some vegetables, and that would be my day. When you are training, we're gonna have a pre-workout window where we can eat anything that spikes our blood sugar. So you want that apple juice, boom, take that apple juice right before you're about to train, blood sugar raises, you're ready to go. You can do anything that's going to be non-core ratio approved, Eat that before your training. Uh, now you wanna to try to avoid foods in that pre-workout that have lots of protein, lots of fat, or lots of fiber, for obvious reasons the fibers kind of stay away from. Go ahead, spike your blood sugar that hour before training. Continue to keep your blood sugar elevated by drinking sports drink or anything that's gonna be non-core ratio approved during your training. So try to keep your blood sugar high. And then uh, after your training, you have the equivalent duration of your training after your training. So let's say you went for a three hour bike ride. You have three hours from the time you stopped riding your bike 
uh, to eat things that are non-core approved, non-core ratio approved. So you can eat pasta, rice, uh, baked potatoes. All of these things are things you can eat in your post-workout recovery window. And it's really simple. When you're thinking about your calories, you wanna think about replenishing at least 50% of those calories that you burn in your workout. So let's say you did a three hour bike ride and you burned 700 calories per hour uh, on the bike. That would be 50% of that would be you're trying to replenish 350 calories every hour while you're on the bike. This gets complicated. I know it's a lot of math. We talked about a lot of math. I am a math geek. I know not everybody is, uh, but I will tell you it's really fairly simple. Now, the big question is, let's say I know I'm 20 pounds overweight for what I wanna raise my Ironman at, what do I do? The easiest thing to do, okay, is to take that post-workout window. That post-workout window that you're looking at that says, hey, I've got this three hour window after my three hour ride where I can eat whatever I want. So then we're gonna look at that, cut that in half. If we wanna go really extreme, we can do fuel just the training, just immediately after and cut the window out entirely. And so we're just back to core diet, just core ratio approved foods in that window of recovery. You make sure you never restrict your calories during the training. If you do that, you will just diminish your performance. You won't recover well, and you're gonna spiral on the death spiral down to nothing. Losing weight too quickly can also be dangerous, especially if you're trying to train and fuel properly. Um, anything more than a few pounds in a week is gonna be really aggressive because you have to remember that every pound that you're losing is equivalent to 3,500 calories. Part of this diet plan that works for me uh, is keeping me sane with a little bit of binging, especially during those workouts. So I'm not immune to this. I love donuts, I love ice cream, I love cake. I'm just a fat kid who loves cake inside. So uh, it's, it's, it's coming out. And if I want a piece of cake, I want to do that my pre-workout window, during my workout, or that post-workout window. I don't want to sneak into the kitchen and eat cake and chocolate milk at midnight and then go back to bed. Oh boy, 3 a.m. That's bad timing because my blood sugar was low. I spiked it, I went and laid down for bed. My body's gonna turn all that excess sugar in my body into fat. Um, I wanna do that in a workout window. And the analogy is when the furnace is hot, you can feed it and it will get away with it. Now, you can't outrun a bad diet. Okay, you just can't. If you have too bad of a diet, you will not perform the way you should, but there are certain instances where a little bit of cake or donuts or ice cream uh, is okay. Uh, if you have some questions, we will show a list right now of some approved uh, core ratio foods, some things that I like to eat and snack on. And then uh, if you have any other questions, want to know if it's core approved, drop me a, a message in the comments. I will respond to you. Otherwise, uh, you can check out the Core Diets website and Jesse Kropelnicki's book. So your weight drastically improves or diminishes your results in a triathlon or running race. And paying attention to it can help optimize your results and help you achieve all the goals and dreams you set for yourself. If you enjoyed this video, you want to see more of it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I've got all kinds of great Ironman tips on training, nutrition, racing, amazing content. I would love for you to join me on this journey. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Check it out every week.